It's a wild life in the mountains. Creating a home in the rural northern Pocono or southern Catskill Mountains is definitely committing to living a wild life. Not because of the local party animals, but due to the wide variety of animals that we encounter living here every day. It seems like there are critters everywhere. But it's nothing compared to the amount and diversity of wildlife that was here in the 1800s. Newspaper articles and stories from the 1800s chronicle not only the variety of animals, but also the quantity of animals living in the mountains. Stories of panthers wandering mountain trails, elk roaming the Pocono Plateau, flocks of passenger pigeons, and golden eagles flying along the mountain peaks. There were even sightings of the Lenape hunter, or hairy man spirit, that many people often associated with Bigfoot legends. Lenape tribes still tell the story of the spirit hunter roaming the Catskill and Pocono Mountains. It was also in and along the Delaware River that there were so many rattlesnakes in the 1800s that a man could easily earn a living by hunting them. A rattlesnake skin would fetch 50 cents, or about 1350 in today's dollars. Or one ounce of snake oil would be worth one dollar, or about $27 today. The skins were used for belts and shoes, and the snake oil was used in so-called cures and supplied the industry of snake oil salesmen in the Northeast. Rattlesnake oil was often mixed into addictive drugs like cocaine or opium and sold as a cure for ailments or a way to boost general overall health. These products were often found in traveling medicine shows that passed through the region. Many of the remedies sold didn't even contain a single drop of snake oil. Snake varieties that are found in the Pocono and Catskills include mainly rattlesnakes, copperheads, grass snakes, ring neck snakes, black water snakes, northern water snakes, milk snakes, and garter snakes. The only venomous snakes are copperheads and rattlesnakes. These days, fatal snake bites are rare. When walking through the woods, along bodies of water, or exploring rocky areas, it's important to be aware of your surroundings to avoid encountering these reptiles. By 1894 in Pennsylvania, it was certain that many of the animals were vanishing because of overhunting. Many hunters in Pennsylvania, in order to earn an income, often supplied East Coast restaurants with wild game for their menus. In addition to over-harvesting animals for food, the trapping of fur-bearing animals for coats took its toll. And with the timber industry clear-cutting forest, natural habitats were destroyed. You could also add in runoff from coal mining, waste from factories, and raw sewage being dumped into the rivers, poisoning the habitats of many animals. As a result of vanishing animal populations, the Pennsylvania Game Commission was formed in 1895. Pennsylvania was able to rebuild a diverse population of wildlife, with over 480 species of mammals and birds found in the area today. So what kind of animals are still in the Poconos and Catskill Mountains? One of the best known success stories is the return of the American bald eagle, from only a few nesting pairs to over 100 nesting pairs. The elimination of lead shot reduced lead poisoning in birds, and banning the pesticide DDT played a huge role in the rebound of eagle populations. Along with eagles, peregrine, and red-tailed falcons, great blue, black crown, green herons, great horned, barn, and soft wet owls, as well as osprey, thrive in these mountains. Living in the Pocono Mountains, we see birds like this every day including this turkey vulture we caught sunning itself in a tree over the summer. Wild turkeys have made a comeback as well. In the entire state of Pennsylvania, there were only about 3,500 birds left due to overhunting and the clearing of habitats in 1900. It took until 1950 when the state's new forest started to mature for the turkey population to recover 
and now there are thousands of birds in each county. While turkeys mainly eat plants and insects, birds of prey rely on fish and smaller animals as a food source. Many species of fish, such as trout, bass, walleye, perch, and panfish to name a few, are found in the lakes, rivers, and streams of the Pocono and Catskill Mountains. Predators also eat small animals like rats, mice, and voles, which are plentiful. The elusive wood rat is rare, but may be found in certain mountain areas of the region, along with the more common Norway rat. Mice varieties include the deer, house, white-footed, woodland, and the meadow jumping mouse. As the weather gets cold, some mice seek shelter indoors. House mice are common and love to eat household soap in addition to anything else they can scavenge. Related to mice, voles are mouse-like creatures that live in shallow burrows. The meadow vole is often referred to as a field mouse. Other species found here include the redback, woodland, and southern redback voles. Often thought of as flying mice, the Pocono and Catskill Mountains are home to many species of bat, including the brown, northern long-eared, Indiana, small-footed, silver-haired, tri-colored, red, and hoary bats. Bats that hibernate over the winter are susceptible to white-nosed disease, which has reduced the bat populations in the region by over 99%. Another threat is people exploring caves in the winter, disturbing the hibernating bats, causing them to use up energy and reducing their ability to survive the winter. Although most people fear bats, they eat insects and play an important role in keeping mosquito populations under control. Birds of prey, fox, possums, skunks, and snakes also rely on small mammals as a primary food source in addition to fish and frogs. The fox is an opportunistic creature that hunt mice, rabbits, rats, woodchucks, possums, porcupines, chickens, bird eggs, squirrels, game birds, songbirds, fruit, and even domestic cats. They can be found close to populated areas and don't seem to be bothered living around people. One of the fox's food sources includes hares or rabbits. Although closely related, hares differ from rabbits because they have a different digestive tract. Snowshoe hares live on the mountain plateaus of the Poconos, and the more common cottontail rabbits live in bushy areas where the ground cover is good to avoid predators like fox and bobcats. The bobcat is generally a nocturnal animal and are rarely seen by people. Another elusive predator is the eastern coyote. In the 1960s, the coyote migrated through the Catskills to the Pocono Mountains, which had the largest coyote population in Pennsylvania in the 1970s. By the 1990s, coyotes had spread throughout the entire state. Water-based animals are the most fun to watch. Beavers are found in many lakes and wetlands in the Northeast. Living in colonies and considered rodents, beavers are generally shy, and young beavers live with their parents for up to two years before traveling downstream to find their own territories. Other water-based animals include river otters, mink, and muskrats. River otters frequent local bodies of water, including the upper Delaware River. They are curious and playful creatures that enjoy swimming close to kayaks and canoes, observing the strange creatures passing through their domain. A relative to the river otter, the fisher, is not a water-based animal, as its name would imply. It is closer in resemblance to a weasel, and it's known for its ability to prey upon porcupines, both on the forest floor and in treetops. Porcupines are seen from time to time in the woodlands, and we came across this fellow while walking on a trail in Lackawaxen Township. The porcupine's ability to climb trees was quite impressive and is their first defensive option when encountering a predator. 
Other animals that live close to humans include skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, and raccoons. Skunks are nocturnal scavengers, often seen around homes and campgrounds where scraps of food may be found, and they protect themselves from predators by discharging a stream of a foul-smelling musk and is truly a repellent to all mammals. The skunk can shoot its musk about 12 feet. So if you encounter a skunk, keep your distance. Another night stalker is the raccoon. Raccoons are omnivores and will eat just about anything, but they are particularly fond of berries, apples, nuts, insects, worms, fish, frogs, and crayfish. During daylight hours, the raccoon spends its time in treetops. Squirrels and chipmunks also travel in treetops. They eat mainly berries, seeds, and nuts, and store food for the winter. Chipmunks often eat food on the spot, leaving behind piles of shells and husk. Another animal that likes to live close to people, where there's plenty of food and ground cover, is the region's only marsupial, the possum, which comes from the Native American word meaning white animal. They are generally non-aggressive, shy, solitary creatures attracted to the edges of suburbs and towns where there are wooded areas and streams. Possum raise their young in pouches on the mother's abdomen, very similar to the kangaroo. As a defense mechanism, Possum will either climb a tree, hide in a bush, or play dead, also known as playing possum. The woodchuck, also known as groundhogs, also live on the edge of human development. The groundhog lives in a barrel that often has several entrances for easy escape from predators. An average-sized groundhog can burrow into a garden and destroy it in a matter of hours. Although they look like a cute and cuddly little animal, they are far from it, and when cornered, can be aggressive and dangerous by utilizing their sharp teeth and claws. Black bears also have sharp teeth and claws, and may be dangerous in certain situations. Bears are prevalent throughout the northeastern United States. Seeing a black bear is quite common during the summer, spring, and fall months. They can be found scavenging food from household garbage cans or dumpsters. If you live in upstate New York, western New Jersey, or eastern Pennsylvania, chances are good you probably have a black bear story. There are thousands of videos on the internet of black bears ravaging bird feeders, hanging out in hammocks, swimming in pools, or lounging in backyards. Most black bear can be driven off by banging pants together or making a loud noise. When hiking in the spring, it is important to be watchful, not to accidentally get between a mother and her cubs. The black bear is an accomplished tree climber and can run quite fast, so trying to outrun them might be a long shot. A good deterrent is to keep bear spray handy if you're hiking in forest areas known to be inhabited by black bear. In the wild, black bear are mainly vegetarians and love fruit and berries. They have been known to explore porches and enter homes. As in the case of our bear story, the Intamin's eating bear, our friend and neighbor, worked as a delivery driver for Intamin's, a donut and pastry company. In their house, which bordered state game lands, he often stored boxes of Intamin's donuts and pastries in his kitchen. One morning while on his delivery route, a bear walked up the stairs, onto his deck, pushed open the screen door to the porch, then opened the house door, walked into the kitchen, and proceeded to eat every box of donuts, cake, and pastries it could find. The man's wife, hearing the noise in the kitchen, discovered the bear and ran to hide in a bedroom closet and called 911. The responding emergency vehicles scared the bear away, 
who had eaten hundreds of donuts, cakes, and pastries. We later found out from Gameland officials that they often use baked goods as bait to lure in and trap a nuisance bear so that it can be relocated for safety. These are some of the more common animals that we share the outdoors with. And there are many more birds and animals that live in the Pocono and Catskill Mountains. We hope to cover more of them in future episodes. Observing animals in the wild can be entertaining and informative. To learn more about wildlife, conservation, or hunting in the Pocono Mountains, visit the Pennsylvania Game Commission website at pgc.pa.gov. To learn more about animals, conservation, and hunting in the Catskill Mountains, go to the New York Department of Environmental Conservation website at dec.ny.gov forward slash outdoor forward slash hunting.html.